What is intelligence? Welcome to Philosopher's Corner. I'm John, and today I'm going to discuss or entertain the question of what is intelligence? I believe that intelligence is applied awareness. Now, when intelligence comes up, people usually think about IQ tests and pure intellectual horsepower. Now, I get what they're saying, and that's for sure a component of intelligence. In my case, you know, it being applied awareness, it is applicable to both the application and the awareness factors. But I've seen as we move through in society, if people strictly take the view that intelligence is strictly intellectual, uh, and furthermore, strictly intellectual potential, in a lot of cases, I feel like that's not what intelligence is. And I feel like that's a big issue. I was like less than philosophical, it was more like social commentary. But let's examine for a moment traditionally what people think of intelligence in the Western world. It's IQ, an IQ test. And when you look into an IQ test or what an IQ test is analyzing, it's really analyzing critical thinking, spatial thinking, abstract thinking, some concrete thinking. But eventually, eventually it's just, it's generally just a uh, analysis of the intellectual potential of the individual. It's like taking a computer and they run strictly uh, spec tests on the hardware to determine, oh, what are the capabilities of this hardware? Like how many gigahertz processing, like how much information can it process? What potential OSs can we load onto this? Does it have a good compiler, right? That's essentially intelligence in the Western world is reduced to an IQ test, which is really just a hardware scan on the intellect and the brain. And it doesn't really take into uh, account a lot of other essential critical factors when it comes to intelligence. I mean, they're really mainly measuring just the, uh, the left brain side of things, like the rational side of thinking, right? And then go, okay, well, that's intelligence. Well, even just in that short discussion, you can see it's not a proper full spectrum concept for intelligence. I mean, intelli intelligence, really? Because really, intelligence is, um, it's, a, it's a derivative of consciousness, we're not going to get into that for now, but that's that's the good stuff. Intelligence is a derivative of consciousness. It's the manifested version of it, applied awareness. So now we're going to get in, back into, you know, what what constitutes awareness, right? I'm saying applied awareness. So what comes into the awareness factors when you, because <clears throat> when you drill down, you go, okay. You have the intellectual capability to hold abstract concepts or spatial thinking or analy analytical thinking or d essentially data processing. So what does it mean when you're talking about the awareness, right? Because there's because that side, all of that type of thinking, sort of like reality engineering thinking, can really just be summed up with uh, cleverness. That's really just cleverness of thought. And that's a, that's a surface level thing. And what we're trying to say is, okay, what's something a little more in the depths, right? When we're talking about awareness, applied awareness. Now, awareness, when you start to go into it, this being a component of my definition or philosophical understanding of intelligence, awareness being a component, what's involved in awareness? So to me, awareness, uh, for sure, the intellect and critical analysis and thinking and spatial awareness and all the things that are measured by an IQ test, they're for sure involved, 100%. Right off the bat, that's all in play. But now we gotta get into more realistic stuff philosophically, which is what, like for instance, uh, intuitions, instincts, feelings, and starting with intuitions and instincts, things that are born of different capabilities of the brain that have not yet been uh, universally acknowledged by orthodox science, but are in fact true, incredibly enhance one's intelligence. 
in this case, in the mode of awareness. To have intuition, repeatable, demonstrable intuition that's reliable, absolutely brings your awareness level higher. 100%. Your instincts count. Your feelings count. Your ability to do psychoanalytical analytical dream analysis counts. Being able to have your third eye open. Being able to have all these other extra senses come into play. All of the abilities of a person to receive more information. Who open up to the reality in a greater way. People who have expanded their awareness. Awareness expansion is a millennia old tradition of the human race from shamans and, and sages and mystics and artists and musicians and anybody who's engaged in a mode of life that has become transcendental to some respect where they've expanded their awareness. It doesn't, you, it doesn't matter how you do it. You could be a ditch digger, you could be a scuba diver, you could be astronaut, it doesn't matter. At a certain point when you grow in your study of life, your engagement of life and your awareness expands and you go, oh, now my awareness of life is greater than it was. That also increases your intelligence, and in some in some ways, in a nonlinear mode, it can. Some of these insights can crack open the Maya of the moment of the of the mundane reality, and, and you can peek into the light level, and you can have a breakthrough that ten x's or hundred x's your overall intelligence. It levels you up to a way where now you're not just working with personal intelligence, you're working with infinite intelligence. And if one can upgrade themselves to be compatible with infinite intelligence through the expansion of awareness and the associated inner work that requires, then wow. And that's not measured in an IQ test. Right? But that like when you become aware aware and by scale, and we have it on good notice that if you increase your awareness by scale eventually you get to a point of universality and everyone who gets there says that that's the goal that's the end point that's where infinity meets eternity that's where everything meets up and that's where there's harmony is just in that universal moment and so the awareness if it's expanded the universal moment that's already one factor on the awareness side that like can level you up is not measured by traditional testing for intelligence, right? And so one of those other factors with the awareness in those, there's many, probably however many you can figure out, but one of the big ones is determining what's in your conscious field and your unconscious field. Right? Because when we're talking about intelligence as applied awareness, okay, you have the awareness, then how do you apply it? Well, the application of your focus of your consciousness onto a conscious item, you can see that very quickly. Those are things that have your conscious attention. In the computer analogy, wherever that's your RAM, like what are you running in the prefrontal? What do you, what's got your attention today? The thing, whatever it is, it could be routine chores, minor emergencies, personal crisis. It could be like big stuff, or it could be, it could be your kids, it could be stocks, it could be your expression, it could be your work, it could be anything. Whatever's got, it could be the, you know, you're, you're cooking, so you have all the ingredients in front of you. you all, everything needs your attention at that moment, and that's your conscious awareness. Well, it's great that you're making a meal in your consciousness, but, you know, like if you're like a child, a survivor of childhood abuse, maybe in your unconscious in the living room, like your dad's still beating you while you're in the here consciously making something, right? And then, all these other unconscious factors, all these other scenes in your life that may be less dramatic, along with the dramatic incident there, um, all these other unconscious scenes that are playing out, right, that are in different shades. Like, I don't know, your business, your people you work with who, I don't know, you're at home right now, but you're not working with them right now, but they're still in your unconscious, in like a gray area, where they're having their own lives until you meet them again at work or whatever. And there's a whole string of unconscious activities ranging into... And there's a misunderstanding about unconscious areas that like, oh, it's always bad. It's always it. Like Pennywise is in your unconscious. No, there could be all kinds of good stuff. Uh, like if you're a movie star and you're about to make a film, well, in your unconscious or like, let's say the next movie project that you haven't decided upon that has an important 
theme in your mind that's in your unconscious. Like, let's say it's a uh, uh, what human liberation, right? Like, you're making a picture right now about the stock market, and then like, but you really want to make a picture about human liberation. So, in your unconscious is this idea of oh, well, all the human liberation stories and all the producers and people that need to get involved and money and all that, and then. Also in that unconscious area of your mind is, oh, at that movie studio, there's probably like all the props and all the cameras and stuff that are not in motion yet, but they're in your unconscious for that movie project. And when you're con when it starts to become more conscious and more energy flows into it, then those items in the prop department will start to move and the budgets will move and the people will write and all those things will come into your conscious and get animated, right? So they'll go from your unconscious where they're sitting there and they'll be brought into the consciousness, the light of your awareness. And then it'll start to be animated. And it's that process, that flow from unconscious to consciousness that really seems to be the catalyst for awareness. And people have freaked out because a lot of times it seems to be that things that are in the unconscious have stuff that we don't want to work on, stuff that we find intimidating or scary or whatever, until because mainly because of entropy and inertia. They've sat there. And so, you know, the problem seems to mount in our mind because in the unconscious we're not looking at it we're just like theorizing about what it's like until we pull it out of the unconscious and pull it more into the conscious and then it's never it's almost never as bad as like we imagine it to be it's usually it's way better because when we bring it in all these other factors come in that we can't rationally do we're trying to make an emotional assessment of our unconscious by using our rational mind and that creates a disconnect or the dissonance it's not true right so as it comes in and all these other factors start to bear when you bring things into the light of your consciousness and you become aware of it and then it becomes into your field and you become aware of it and then all of your other abilities can come in whatever it is your heartfelt abilities your analytical abilities your vibe abilities fill in the blank now in that moment now you're starting to apply your awareness now we can, in my opinion, start to become intelligent. Intelligent in the true manner. Intelligent in the philosophical manner. Because now in that moment, we can sit there and let everything come to bear. All our wisdom, all our trials and errors, our education, our feelings, our intuitions, whatever we can, whatever comes to us from the atmosphere. Because we're human beings, we're bio antennas. And I get that old philosophers, they lived in the, essentially the dark ages where they didn't get to go around and eat mushrooms and crush like all the media of earth 24 hours a day that's ever existed and so we know now that we have extrasensory perceptions is third eye is an actual organ uh the abilities of open chakra systems have been proven so we need to update and upgrade our terms and conditions and how we discuss things philosophically as well to start casually normalizing and incorporating a lot of these abilities because they're true. So when we're sitting in these moments with applied awareness, it also reflects the depths of how we've examined situations, which normal intelligence tests don't. The depth of problem solving is also not in a condensed timer in that respect. Like so figuring out a deep issue, one of the ingredients of deep analysis is time. And deep analysis can be compressed over time. That's why I think that's one of the aims of philosophy. I think it's one of the aims of wisdom is to sort of take a lot of information and zip file it and make that routine a zip file within us. And that zip file also includes a whole person thing. Like it's, you have to have emotions and heart and balance and all this. It's not just a strict intellectual thing. I'm speaking about it intellectually because this is a philosophical discussion, but it includes the feelings, the emotions, the memories, all that stuff whole body solution. So when we sit there in the moment and we can apply our awareness to the conscious object, the conscious object being anything. It could be cooking, it could be an abstract idea, it could be a bank deal, it could be surfing a wave, it doesn't matter. Right? So you can see the full, like, when you watch Laird Hamilton surf a wave, trust me, you're seeing an intelligent being. Like the wisdom it takes to, to do what he does repeatedly, He's communicating to us that he's tapped into a deep wellspring of deep, deep natural wisdom and other things. 
most likely divinity and a whole bunch of other stuff that allows him to repeatedly do what he's doing, right? And, if, and when you look across the full spectrum of humanity, you can start to witness the intelligence for what it is. It's, it's, a, it's beautiful. So intelligence, so applied awareness. So you have the awareness factor. Awareness builds in all these different capabilities or it includes all these different capabilities and assessments and time and as deep as you can take it. It includes that because now it's starting to give credit to what's the consciousness, what's the essence of that person or being or thing that's being encapsulated in this vehicle that's displaying the forms of intelligence. Because it's not just human. You watch all the different animals, but you know, we're starting to more widely recognize intelligent animals, you know, all types of birds, all types of like octopus, dolphins, whales, you know, primate. Like there's now it's like becoming more widespread that, oh, wow, yeah, the animal's intelligent, go figure. Uh, they're not just like automated robots. It's like, yeah, okay. And so the awareness is also the recognition of the continued consciousness and the essence of the different beings using their bodies and their abilities to apply their awareness in the moment. And so it can take on a less intellectualized, like sort of Western hemisphere measure of the intelligence quotient and more into the applied awareness in the moment because there's also different types of intelligence. There's critical intelligence, there's, be there's beauty intelligence, there's harmonization intelligence, and eventually you get to universal intelligence. And that's just sort of a pure wellspring of energy, which can be applied through the whole system, sort of a universal donor of intelligence. And, um, and in that respect, the reality is the greatest intelligence because it's all reality and creation is, is applied awareness. And people engaged and beings engaged in infinite levels of experiencing the applied awareness and engaging in it and realizing that it's true for themselves to whatever standard they see they need and to whatever standard and reflexivity that comes back to them from what they've determined is their intelligence search. So they're, because because they know what their intelligence level is and they're in the process of growth of it and expanding the awareness and the interaction with the reality is the greatest teacher to validate and both grow the intelligence and the awareness so that there's a sense of becoming smarter and a sense of becoming more intelligent. And at a certain point, all of that sort of self-analysis can dissipate into a sublime sense of fulfillment and contentedness that one can navigate through this big, huge ocean that we call life. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode on Philosopher's Corner. It was great having you with me. Uh, intelligence, applied awareness. Have a great day.